Hey there, lovelies. So, a couple of things I'd like to mention before I get into today's topic. Uh, first off, I'm sorry there hasn't been a video for the past couple of weeks. Uh, for those who don't know, a couple weekends back, me and my girlfriend moved into an apartment together. So, between packing up all my stuff and following that up with unpacking all my stuff, which, by the way, took way longer than I anticipated, I haven't been able to work on videos. Now, being totally honest, there is some other stuff that has been using up my time, like Final Fantasy XIV. But hey, gotta balance work with play, otherwise I'll burn myself out. Anyways, that's all I wanted to do. Apologize for the lack of updates and let you know what's been going on. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the topic I wanted to discuss. Now, as you may have guessed if you read the video title, I want to talk on video game prequels. Um, a little backstory here, I work at a retro slash used video game store and recently I was pricing through some games we had gotten traded in and God of War Ascension caught my eye for whatever reason and I decided to read the back of the box. Before he was a god, he was a man. Join Kratos as he seeks freedom, redemption, and the clarity to avenge his family in this prequel to the best-selling God of War franchise. Experience an epic untold story, enhanced combat mechanics, and all new multiplayer battles. Now I haven't played the game, but that bit at the end about enhanced combat mechanics got me thinking of an in inherent problem with prequels and video games. When we get a new entry into a franchise, we expect something new. New weapons, new attacks, new mechanics, it all kind of depends on the game. But this creates a problem with prequels because... How do you add new stuff without bringing up the question, if this takes place before the other games, where was this stuff in those ones? Now, some games do a good job on this, others don't. I honestly haven't played a ton of prequels, and I'm going to try to talk a bit on all the ones I have played, and if anyone has suggestions of prequels that do a good job of not leaving loose ends, uh, feel free to mention them in the comments. Now first I'd like to at least mention the prequels that I've played that are so far gameplay or story-wise from the games that are prequels to you that you can't really compare them. Uh, first on that list would be Shadow of the Colossus, which is pretty much a prequel to Ico. Um, it's supposed to explain the origins of the Horn Children, or that's the theory at least. I wouldn't have even thought of including it, but it showed up on the list of video game prequels I found, and like I said, it's so far gameplay, and for that matter, timeline-wise, you can't really compare the games. But, uh, just felt like mentioning it. Next would be Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, which, honestly, I don't remember much of because it's been so long since I've played it, and I don't think I ever actually finished it. That said, from what I do remember, I do think there were some loose ends it leaves plot-wise, like how there is no reference to the characters Genesis or Angeal and Seven, despite them being these important, high-ranking members of Soldier. I mean, obviously those aren't there because those characters were created after, but it still creates this weird dissonance in the continuity, like, well, why did everyone forget about them? But who knows, maybe with the remake they'll add details like that so the games connect to each other better. Mechanically, the games play very differently, so that... Not much to compare there. I felt the game did a good job of incorporating materia into the new combat system, and honestly wouldn't mind if the remake for 7 ended up changing the combat system to something a little like the one present in Crisis Core, but I digress. Now, though these are a bit different from what I originally wanted to focus on with this video, these games I think provide a good example of how you can make a prequel without having to make them bigger and better versions of the previous game. Now, some games do go that bigger, better version route eh, with mixed results. Uh, Halo Reach, for example, I think did both a good and bad job of being a prequel. Um, Reach was well established long before the game was made as a place for experimental weaponry. So it makes sense that perhaps some of the human weapons there wouldn't be elsewhere because they're experimental, not many made kind of thing. But at the same time, it doesn't avoid the questions of where were these in the other games. The biggest offender here would actually be the Covenant weapons and forces. This includes the Skirmisher enemies, a subspecies of the Jackals that you never see in any of the previously released games that 
take place later in the timeline with no explanation, as well as pretty much every new weapon the Covenant use. Now you could assume that maybe the focus rifle was upgraded to or replaced with the beam rifle, the sniper rifle used by the Covenant in Halo 2 and 3, but what about the needle rifle, the concussion rifle, the plasma repeater, and the plasma launcher? I can think of no suitable explanation for these weapons not being around beyond the obvious the game was newer and required new weapons to keep players interested. Um, on that note, Halo Wars I think does a well enough job at avoiding these questions, but I also haven't played that game in so long that's about all I have to say on it. There's nothing that stands out in my mind as continuity breaking, but like I said, it's been a long time so maybe there was something glaring in that game. But uh, the last couple of prequels that I've played that I want to mention, I think do a perfect job of introducing new things without it breaking continuity with the series that they are prequels to. Um, the first, I'm only partially sure on, and that would be Borderlands pre-sequel. I haven't actually played a ton of the pre-sequel, and I'm still pretty early in the game. But of what I've played, they seem to do a good job of explaining what happens to everything and why it isn't around in Borderlands 2. For example, from what I played, I can only assume Torg ends up destroying all laser weapons because they are, in his words, a travesty to nature. I do wonder about stuff like cryo weapons and why they aren't around in Borderlands 2, but I'm sure they provide an explanation for that as well based on their attention to detail in other areas of the game. Again, this is just an assumption because I've yet to finish the game. No spoilers, please. On the other hand, Metal Gear Solid 3 does a perfect job of introducing new mechanics to the series, like CQC, the new hand-to-hand -hand combat system, and camouflage. Um, and it does this without breaking continuity. The one thing in the game that kind of sticks out is the part where you can get a game over for killing Ocelot when he is unconscious, because it would create a paradox. That fits well with the tone of the series, though, because those games never really took themselves too seriously and have always been full of self-referential and fourth-wall-breaking humor, so I can forgive that part. But uh, honestly, after writing all this up, I realized I've played a criminally small amount of video game prequels, especially when comparing my list of played games with the list of prequels I came across on Wikipedia. Though I do feel the ones that I have played provide a wide variety of quality when it comes to keeping with continuity of the series, it's also such a small sample, and I wonder how many prequels do a good job and how many leave loose ends. Uh, which do you find more common? Games that leave loose ends in either story or mechanics, or ones that explain everything in a satisfying way? Feel free to let me know in the comments, as I'm pretty curious as to which is more common. Um... Not going to do my usual outro here, but, uh, you know, I did want to mention the Facebook page at the very least. Uh, I'm planning on doing a giveaway. I actually have a long list of extra games that I have through, like, Humble Bundle and other stuff. And uh, I've been wanting to do giveaways for a while, but I want to save it for, like, hitting a milestone. So I'm going to try to promote the Facebook page a little more and try to get people to uh, like that, and if we hit 100 likes, I'll go ahead and do the first giveaway. So just wanted to put that out there on the YouTube so that people know about it here as well. Uh, not that I think I have many viewers anyway, but, you know, just covering all my bases. Anyway, uh, have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next video.